Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this really short video about uh, this little project of mine. I've actually had it uh, just kind of sitting in a drawer for quite a while, and I, um, I've i decided that I want to do something else with it, or rather some of the components, uh, but I thought rather than uh, just taking it apart and, you know, and, and not have it anymore, that I would just kind of document um, everything that went into this and what this is. Like many people before have seen, I think, this is a Raspberry Pi running uh, retro arc, uh, a totally self-contained Game Boy, essentially, that can play multiple different emulators and games and whatnot. This one specifically, I, I want to say it's rather unique because it uses a full Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that hasn't had any alterations to it. That is, it has all four USB ports available, uh, and it has Ethernet, obviously. It still has uh, HDMI available. It even has the SD card, uh, somewhat accessible. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, it works, and um, I have played quite a bit with it, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, but now I am wanting to use the Raspberry Pi for a different project, so I was about to just kind of take it apart. That's why I've got the soldering iron out, uh, but you know, I just kind of wanted to show this off, um, talk about some things that I would do differently in the future. Um, but yeah, there it is. Uh, four buttons, D-pad, select start, as well as two buttons in the back as L and R. Uh, this is a half of a Game Boy, uh, an actual Game Boy cartridge that's just kind of covering up some things in the back. Uh, it's a rather tight fit for everything in here. So give me a second and I'm going to turn this thing off and I will show you what it looks like inside. All right, so I, I think before I open it up, I'll go over some of the issues I had. Um, just kind of if anybody wants to try a project like this, um, just kind of going over some of the pitfalls and things that I didn't like how it turned out. Honestly, something that you guys might have picked up on already is that why use a full Raspberry Pi 3 um, when I'm not even, I don't even really have controls to play N64 games, for example. A Pi Zero would be more than capable of playing all of the games that I have on here. Um, and so, it's really sort of overpowered for what I'm asking it to do. So I think in the future, I would just use a Pi Zero um, and it, I would be perfectly happy with that. Um, another thing is, you know, I had to make a lot of sacrifices in the construction of the case uh, for to be able to fit the full Raspberry Pi in here. You know, I've had, you can see I've had to cut away quite a lot of the Game Boy case. And because of that, I, I this technically is not a finished project because I never actually found a way to keep the case together. I wanted some way for the case to be closed securely but still able to open it up. It actually has, uh, you can open up the battery compartment uh, and if, if ever you needed, you could replace this battery with something else. I also never was really happy with how the controls came out. Um, that's probably partially just because of my building ability. You know, uh, the buttons feel really mushy and like you have to push down really hard on them. And I feel like that's just on me. That's kind of my skill as a builder at this moment. So opening it up, you can see that it's a huge mess. Uh, yeah, so I'll just kind of go over the components one by one. Obviously, I've got the Raspberry Pi up here. Uh, this is a, a charging circuit. Uh, it came from Adafruit. Um, I believe this battery also came from Adafruit as well, but uh, I could be wrong. It's been quite a while since I've worked on this. Um, but this is a removable connection right here, so you can just pull out this battery and put in a new one. The, these are the two buttons in the back here. This is the 
circuit board for the screen, uh, which, like you can see, is just kind of floating out in the in the middle of space here. Um, and then obviously, ooh, goodness, this is the screen right here. Uh, this is a car backup screen, and the reason I went with this was because it didn't use the HDMI port. The idea was that I could have the HDMI port available for if I wanted to plug this into a TV and play it with an external controller. Uh, kind of in the same vein as like a Switch, for example. Um, this right here is, uh, underneath this circuit board here, is the Tinker Boy, which honestly, if I did this all over again, I would buy this in an instant. It just makes things so much easier. It handles all of your controls, uh, and it also provides uh, the headphone jack, um, and it just makes all of your circuitry way more easy. And as you can see, I need all the help that I can get with my wiring job. Um, and then of course, it's got a little uh, mono speaker down here. The Tinker Boy has a, uh, an amp on board that handles all of the speaker operations. And so that's really it, guys. Um, I've, I really had a lot of fun with this project. Uh, a lot of the things I do, I just kind of do them to prove that I could do it. Uh, and this was no exception. You know, I probably honestly spent more time making this than I did playing it. So at this point, I'm just going to take out the Raspberry Pi and use it for another project. Um, watch the channel for something uh, that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, that I'm going to be using this for. Uh, and I'm going to keep all the other components, obviously, but in the future, you know, I might just grab a, a Pi Zero and use that in, in place of this. Um, but for now, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful to somebody. Feel free to, to ask me questions in the comments. I'm sure I've missed so many things about, uh, about doing this. Um, that uh, I hope I can answer for people in the future. Um, and just keep watching the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. Bye.